You got to be ready before you can do it. Hello, Chuck Butall here again, and thanks for tuning in to When It Comes Down To It. Today we're talking about commercial restoration basics. Now folks, this is like the 30,000 foot overview of where you gotta start thinking about turning your company to doing commercial work. So I'm not gonna obviously in the next five minutes get into any kind of depth um, or turn you into a commercial, but the idea is start looking at these three main points in their subcategories first before you even venture into the world of commercial. The first one is making sure your administrative staff is up to the task, which means you need to have a large loss type consciousness amongst your staff. Um, this literally means that we have to understand that we're going to be bringing in possibly hundreds of temporary workers. Are you geared for that type of backup? Um, do you even have a plan on how to set forth that many people? Um, along the lines of that, of course, is going to be our paperwork and, of course, our education level of insurance, loss of business insurance, and multiple other types of things like code upgrades and all of those have to come along with it. So we have to have an educated administrative staff there. Now, one other part of our administrative staff that's a really big one to think about is our sales and marketing force. Because we don't want them out there just selling every piece of commercial there is. You need to figure out what you can handle and what you want to service. There is basically loosely defined as four different types of commercial losses out there in the world. There is commercial, which is your typical office buildings, probably the facility you're operating your business out of, general commercial offices, warehouse spaces, small things like that. Then we have what we call complex residential. These are condominium complexes, apartment complexes, mansion homes, because now what? We're dealing with either multiple tenants or in multiple contracts, or we're dealing with a single tenant that's what? Very high end in a 12,000 so square foot mansion worth several tens of millions of dollars possibly. We're gonna have to handle those people very carefully. So understand there's a difference between those two. Now major gap changes is when you get into the institutional world. Institutional means we're dealing with schools, public buildings, healthcare, hospitals, and of course what? Our communicable disease issues, there's a lot of timing as far as when we can shut down things because of facility hours needed to be. It's not like you can go into the hospital and say, oh, you had a water loss in the closet? Yeah, we'll just shut you down for the next four hours. Not gonna happen. Even something along like an AT&T call center um, in the regular commercial world, you're not gonna shut down. So make sure you know your business before you get there. Now the last one is industrial. This is a huge step up and probably the most difficult of all because they typically going to have their own security forces, they're going to have their own health and safety forces, and your people are going to have to clear their security, they're going to have to take their health and safety classes, they're going to have to work in groups. So this is going to slow your business down and require a lot of patience by your project management and a guest. We're still in the administration staff. It's going to take some time. So make sure which one of those is best for you. Commercial, complex residential, institutional, or industrial. Make sure you got that taken care of. Now, last thing you need to make absolutely sure of on the administration side is really simple. Do you have enough money for the mobilization and the start of work until you're going to get your first draw or paycheck? Because folks in a home, we're looking at a total loss and many of the small losses of 5,000 bucks. If you don't get paid on that, that's not gonna hammer your business. But an easy commercial loss can go 50 to $100,000. If you don't get paid on that one, now you've got a hole in your, what, cash flow. And we don't wanna have that happen. So make absolutely sure you can cover the loss monetarily, administration-wise, until you get paid. And of course, there's always the possibility of not getting paid even at the commercial level. Step number two, you're legal. Make sure you've got the proper commercial construction attorney. Don't use 
some lawyer who specializes in family law to draw up your commercial contracts, okay? Uh, known people been there, myself included, bad times. Make sure you got the right attorney. Or as we always say in the business, don't bring a poodle to a pit bull fight. Make sure you got a pit bull, okay? Now, number two, who's authorized in your company to actually bid, communicate, and sign and bind the company with that contract? That's a big one. Um, is it just going to be the ownership or is it going to be project managers, general managers? That has to be decided again, legally up front. And of course, as always, the regulatory, which means that we got to worry about licenses. We got to worry about uh, training for people to make sure they meet certain training criteria. We can't just throw somebody on a forklift. They have to be forklift certified. Again, has Whopper, OSHA 10 hour, whatever it happens to be, we need to make sure that legal and regulatory is taken care of. Last step in this process is technical operations. Now here we need to have the physical equipment to do the drying or removal work, as well as the trucks, the dump area that we're gonna dump it all at, or the storage area we're gonna store it at. These all have to be physically arranged ahead of time so that that way when a loss happens, we simply smoothly bring out the equipment, remove the debris, as we just talked about in our previous one, dump that debris, what, safely, efficiently, and according to law in our waste one, and then make absolutely sure everybody's trained on that side of things. Now, tech ops is gonna need support. So like I mentioned before, you're gonna need other possible restoration companies um, to come in and give you a hand on a really large loss project. And these are people you should qualify with ahead of time. Typically, I recommend <laughs> Somebody who's a couple of hours away, you won't compete on a daily basis, but y'all close enough to help each other out in a large loss together. That's one of the best ways to do it. So you're gonna need others, you're gonna need temporaries, and you're gonna need multiple subcontractors here. Glaziers, roofers, um, painters, wallpapers, demo people, whatever you're not gonna do, you wanna have those subcontractors in place to make that job happen. So quite a bit right there. Last one in the tech ops is the soft skills of the technicians themselves, as well as their personality and their knowledge. You need to teach them what to say, and most importantly, what not to say on the job. We do not discuss any type of billing or any type of drying strategy with anyone that we're not contracted with. So if we're contracted with the ownership and the insurance company ask, it's very simple. Mr. Adjuster, I'll be more than happy to get together with you with that, but Mr. Stevenson is our contract signee, so let's go up to Mr. Stevenson's office and we'll all sit down and talk about that aspect of it. And then you're only going to be talking information with the person that you're contractually obligated with. That's law, folks, so don't get away from it. So when it comes down to it, again, make sure your administration is ready. There's a lot we talked about there. The legal side of things here is massive. Make sure you get your ducks in a row legally and get the right attorneys without a shadow of a doubt that are, like I said, commercially specifically designed in that construction world, especially reconstruction insurance, good people to get into. And then of course, making sure our operations and our technical side can perform the task with the proper equipment, the proper training, and of course, most importantly, the proper soft skills. As always, thanks for learning with rtilearning.com and thanks to CNR Magazine for distribution of the series. Um, ah, let's see here. We're gonna have the restoration joke. We're gonna have to work on some restoration jokes. Nice. So what, should I go with Destries? We were sitting there and that's the thing about having, especially if you're deep down in the Southland there and you get a good Southern drawl going on. A friend of ours was asking us, what's a by your side? And it says, well, that's when you really love your wife or husband and you always want to be what? By your side. No, no, screwed it up. <laughs> <laughs> they always want to be by your side. You'd be by their side. That doesn't work. So, all right. Go. So, one of our instructors was asking one time, what's by your side? And he says, well, when you really love the other person and the other person really loves you, that other person always wants to be by your side. <laughs> there we go. That works. <laughs>